Welcome to Next Radio with Broadcast Bionics, innovative solutions for creative people. Hi there, hi, um, I'm Michael Hill, I'm the MD of UK Radio Player Limited, which is a partnership between the BBC and Commercial Radio, and it's aimed at growing radio listening on connected devices. We launched about five months ago uh, with 157 stations linked together across the product. Um, and we found when we sampled the audience a few months ago that we had 5.7 million uh, unique users at that point. Um, we're going to, I'm going to today reveal to you our latest figures and talk you through some of the data and look at how people are beginning to use Radio Player in their lives. So the first thing to say is we're at now at 6.7 million, so we've added a million unique users. That was for the month of August, four weeks across August, which was a busy news month, so it'll go up, it'll go down from there, I'm sure. 282 stations is a really good stat. We've helped more than 130 stations join Radio Player and get really good quality Radio Player consoles since we launched with 157 stations. Um, but how are those 6.7 million people using those 282 stations? So uniquely, for the first time, we can start to look at some of the data that's flowing around the radio player systems. Um, and one of the first things we can look at is the, the two chunks of listening that I, li I like to think of. I like to think um, about the, the spiky side of, of radio player, where people come and go, and the solid side of radio player, where, which is very habitual. Um, looking at that solid side first, this is radio player consoles, about a million pops of the console per day, the blue line. Um, across a 24-hour period, across a, a, a typical weekday. The grey line is normal radio listening, so radio listening done by all, by all other devices. And we've overlaid them so you can see the differences and the similarities. Now, radio is very habitual. Everyone has a morning breakfast peak. Normal breakfast peak at 8 a.m. Our breakfast peak is at 9 a.m., so that's the first thing to clock. And I think that's because people are arriving at their place of work and switching on their PCs and starting up their radio player. Through the day, um, we, we nicely kind of uh, counteract the afternoon dip there. At drive time, uh, we, we, we sag right off, and obviously normal analog listening or in-car listening goes up. In the evening, that's interesting, because we, we actually really fight that downward trend of normal radio listening with another hump in the evening when people have got their laptops and their PCs on at home. Um, that, this was a weekday. That could be the effect of sport. The football season has a very strong effect on radio player as well. When you zoom out, this is four weeks of radio player. So now we're looking at about 25 million pops of the radio player console across the whole radio player network. Um, and I don't need you to tell me, I don't need to tell you where the weekends are. There they are right there. So that hammocking that goes on at the weekends is because we think people are not at their place of work. So we're starting to get a picture of radio player as being very much a workplace-driven uh, listening mode. And over in the, in the right-hand side here, we've got a bank holiday. That's when the Saturday and the Sunday and the Monday stayed at exactly the same level. So all this kind of evidence is starting to stack up that these solid listeners, these habitual listeners, very much driven by workplace listening. And when you look at the search stats, that's also backed up. There's, there's a very kind of predictable focus to the things that people are looking for in radio player. It's a mass market medium, and they're looking for the obvious things. So this is a tag cloud, and the relative sizes of the words um, relate to the frequency with which they were entered into the radio player search engine across a week in July. So everyone has, well, lots of stations have the word radio in their title. So clearly that is absolutely dominating the whole uh, affair. So if we take the words radio and BBC out for the moment, we zoom in a bit now, and we can start to see some of that noisy stuff coming up. Some of the different words are emerging now that the dominance of those terms has gone. So now I'm going to take the digits out, and we start to see some of the brands coming through as words, and we can start to see some of the bigger programs and presenters, Chris and Moyles, and the place names and London coming up. I'm now going to remove all the top-level radio brand names, and now we can see the really spiky side of Radio Player coming through. We can see people looking for Coldplay, London, Sport, Manchester, Dubstep, Glastonbury, and news. Extraordinary scenes in London tonight as fires, riots, and looting spread across large parts of the capital. A massive blaze is burning in Croydon in South London after a furniture store was set alight. So that's how TV covered the riots. Um, but actually, in their millions, people turned to radio for news of how the riots were affecting the areas they were in. 
Uh, and on the Tuesday and the Wednesday, don't forget, weekdays are very good for radio player. Um, during the Tuesday and the Wednesday uh, of that uh, riot period, we saw unprecedented traffic levels across radio player and huge numbers of people searching for things like Riot, London, Manchester. Now, that resulted in big spikes for some of some stations. LBC in London, six times their normal traffic on that, on that day. Um, BBC Local here refers to uh, Radio London, Manchester, WM and Merseyside, who had between three and five times their normal traffic on that day. BRMB in Birmingham, four times. Five Live nationally did very well with twice their normal traffic on that day. So, okay, that raises a couple of challenges for stations with this spiky traffic. A, how do your servers cope when six times the normal load hits them? Yeah, some, some don't work very well. And B, are you reactive enough as a radio station to put into your search metadata in Radio Player the right keywords that people will be looking for? Did you have the words riots in your metadata if you were covering the riots? These guys, One Direction, have, uh, seem to be on a kind of perma tour of the UK, um, and they are visiting every single bloody station in Radio Player by the sound of it, and every time they do, the servers go pop wherever they visit because they have an enormous global fan base, and they are constantly tweeting about where they are. So uh, they've been to BBC Radio 1, they've been to Capital, they've been to The Hits, where they did a, a takeover across three days, across a bank holiday weekend. Um, and the entire Twitterverse went mad. They were tweeting the particular URL of the UK radio player console for the hits radio station. And it went absolutely ballistic. They also visited Real Radio Northwest. So, that, yeah, you can see the boys tweeting from their official Twitter account, which has many hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of followers. Um, they did a special set in the studio, which was videoed and went out live on the radio. Big spike of traffic, three times the normal traffic. Again, this causes huge challenges for stations. My, my biggest question would be, how are stations using ra their radio player and their interactivity to capture the listeners that come in on these spikes and try to transform them into solid listeners? And that's going to be a real challenge for the industry going forward as we try to work out how these populations are shifting around the web. So, in 15 seconds, I'm going to give you a chance to win crap prizes in our console quiz, which is uh, wrapping up this particular sequence, and they really are crap prizes. I'm very proud of these. Uh, a, a few weeks ago, I was sent on spec by a marketing agency some promo gifts, branded radio player headphones on, in a retractable uh, thing. <laughs> so, so far, fucking cool. But actually, it makes everything sound like a telephone. So, they, so I thought, what better place to give them away than a room full of audiophile radio geek? So in a moment, uh, if you know your radio player consoles, you'll be able to win those. First, though, a little word about the uh, next few months at Radio Player. We're we're at 282 stations. I'm very proud of that. We are going to bust 300, uh, hopefully before Christmas. And we're going to do a big push on the smaller community and student stations that haven't managed to get on Radio Player yet. Try and really help them. Um, we know there's a long way to go before Radio Player V1 uh, becomes truly great. So we're refining the search engine. We're upgrading the console around Christmas as well. And we're going to try to get Radio Player into more and more places where people are. Please try the new Facebook Radio Player app, if you haven't yet, and let me know what you think. It's quite interesting in that it mashes Radio Player data with social data. Um, and we're looking at, obviously, tablets and mobiles and IPTVs as well. So here we go, the console quiz to win crap prizes. What I'm going to do, I have trawled the uh, corners of the uh, Radio Player family, and I've found some of the lesser well-known Radio Player consoles. I'm going to reveal them a bit at a time. You're going to shout out when you know which radio station it is and put your hand up, and Matt is going to throw a crap pair of headphones at you. <laughs> Here we go. Well, we got there without anyone saying. <laughs> All right, so is anyone from Amazing Radio here? They really don't know what you look like. Okay, next one. Don't forget to shout out as soon as you know what it is. Jackie. Yes. Radio Jackie. Who is that down here? Right. Next, next one. <laughs> Warwick, yes. Well done. It's taking a while here. I think we need to visit some more corners of Radio Player. Right, here we go. Come on, it's there. 
The logo's on the screen. <laughs> Next. Oh, yes, UCB Gospel. <laughs> okay, this is going really well, Matt. Last one, here we go. It's pink. There you go. Yes. 